Hi guys, welcome back to engineeringtalks.com. Today I have come with a new topic, analysis of pin jointed plane frames or plane trusses. In this video, we will go through the introduction part, which includes the definition, types of frames, types of supports, nature of forces induced in the structural members, and last but not the least, assumptions made for analyzing the pin jointed frames. So, happy learning and if you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe and press the bell icon. Analysis of pin jointed plane frames or plane trusses. First of all, let's see what is meant by a pin jointed frame. A pin jointed frame is a structure made of slender members connected at their ends by means of frictionless hinged joints. Slender means the cross-sectional dimensions of the members will be smaller than that of the length and these members will be subjected to loads and reactions only at the joints. That is, these members are capable of taking the loads only at the joints. Pin-jointed plane frames are also known as plane trusses. So, a pin-jointed plane frame or a plane truss is a frame in which all the members lie in a single plane and these are designed in such a way so as to resist the forces acting in the plane of frame. When an external load acts on the truss, the members will be subjected to either compressive force or tensile force. So we will see that later in the video. Roof trusses and bridge trusses are examples of plane frames. Roof trusses are used to support the sloping roofs whereas the bridge trusses are used to support the deck. Wooden frames as well as steel frames can be used in trusses. End joints in wooden frames can be made by either nailing or bolting, whereas in the case of steel frames, end joints can be made by either riveting or welding the structural members to gasset plates. A gasset plate is nothing but a thick sheet of steel used for joining the structural steel members. Here I have shown a roof truss. You can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all these are the end joints. These end joints are made by means of welding these structural steel members to gasset plates. These end joints can also be made by means of riveting these members to gasset plates like this. If all the members in a frame do not lie in a single plane as in the case of a plane frame or plane truss, then such a frame is known as a space truss or a space frame. So, transmission towers, observation towers, etc. are examples of space trusses. Perfect frame, deficient frame and redundant frame are the different types of frames. A pin jointed frame which has got just the sufficient number of members to resist the loads without undergoing appreciable deformation in shape is known as a perfect frame. Here I have shown a triangular frame and this is the simplest perfect frame. It has got three joints and three members. Here I have shown another perfect frame which has got four joints and five members. So it may be noted that in order to increase one joint in a perfect frame, two more members are required right so this equation that is m equal to 2j minus 3 gives the relationship between the number of members and the number of joints in a perfect frame here m is the number of members and j is the number of joints satisfying this equation alone doesn't make a frame a perfect frame here you can see that in both the cases number of joints as well as number of members are the same in the first case, the number of joints is equal to 6. In the second case also, number of joints is equal to 6. The number of members in the first case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And number of members in the second case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Therefore, the number of joints as well as number of members in both the cases are the same. Therefore, 9 is equal to 2 into 6 minus 3. This equation is satisfied in both the cases. But only this frame is a perfect frame. Because this frame is capable of retaining its shape for loading at any joint. Whereas this frame is not capable of uh, retaining its shape when it is loaded at the joint 6. Therefore, the necessary and sufficient condition for a perfect frame is that 
it should be able to retain its shape when loaded in the plane of frame at any joint. A frame is said to be deficient if the number of members in the frame are less than that required for a perfect frame. Here you can see that number of members is equal to 4 and number of joints is also equal to 4. So 4 is less than 2 into 4 minus 3, right? That is 4 is less than 5. Such a frame is known as a deficient frame. These frames cannot retain their shape when loaded. A frame is said to be redundant if the number of members in the frame are more than that required for a perfect frame. Here you can see that number of members is equal to 11, whereas the number of joins is equal to 6. So 11 is greater than 2 into 6 minus 3, that is 11 is greater than 9. So such a frame is known as a redundant frame. Here you can see that there is an extra diagonal member in each panel and each extra member adds 1 degree of indeterminacy. So it's a 2 degree redundant frame. And such frames cannot be analyzed using the equations of equilibrium alone. Therefore, these are known as statically indeterminate frames. Roller support, hinge support and fixed support are the different types of supports. Rollers are free to rotate as well as translate along the surface upon which the roller rests. The surface can be horizontal, vertical or inclined at any angle. The reaction force in the case of a roller support is always perpendicular to the surface like this. A hinge support can resist both vertical as well as horizontal forces, but not the moment. That is, it allows the member to rotate but not to translate in any direction. Hence, it consists of a vertical reaction and a horizontal reaction. If the trusses are rigidly fixed to the support like this, then there will be neither rotation nor translation in any direction. Hence, there will be a vertical reaction, a horizontal reaction as well as a moment. Since the fixed supports restrain both translation as well as rotation, they are also known as rigid supports. I told you that when an external load acts on the truss, the members will be subjected to either compressive force or tensile force. Here you can see that this truss is loaded at the joint B. Due to this, the member AB is subjected to a tensile force T, whereas the member ED is subjected to a compressive force C. Due to this tensile force acting on the member AB, there will be an equivalent opposite force induced in this member AB, which can be represented by arrows directing inwards. Similarly, due to this compressive force acting on the member ED, there will be an equivalent opposite force induced in the member ED, which can be represented by arrows directing outwards. So, a tensile force acting on a member can be represented by arrows directing inwards and a compressive force acting on a member can be represented by arrows directing outwards. This will be clear to you once we start analyzing the plane frames, okay? These are some of the assumptions we make before performing the analysis of pin jointed frames. All joints are frictionless pinned joints or hinge joints. Loads act only at the joints. Self weight of the members are negligible. Members have uniform cross sections throughout. If they have varying cross sections, then the centroids of all cross sections lie along the same longitudinal line. I hope the topics dealt in this video are clear to you. From the next video onwards, we will start analyzing the plane trusses. Please do like and share the video and subscribe the channel. Thank you.